Well, welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Barcelay Mineral Corps, a channel, a junior explorer expanding its gold assets in the prolific mining district of Sweden during a booming precious metal market to discuss Steve Cope, Senior Director of Business and Development, uh, to kind of take us through the investor deck today and give us that really high level overview. So first and foremost, uh, welcome back, sir. Thanks, Kalia. Yeah, it's good to be back. Appreciate it. Um, that's an exciting story. I'm glad we get to share it with the world. And a pleasure to get you on because uh, Sweden is definitely an interesting place. So I'm going to hand it off to you. I'll get us uh, share the uh, investor deck there and just take us through it. Uh, what you think is relevant? Absolutely. So one of the key points here in Sweden is this is one of the top mining jurisdictions in the world. I mean, we've got uh, uh, where we sit in the northern part of Sweden here. We sit at the intersection of two major uh, mineralizing trends. We've got the east-west VMS belt that the land is really known for. And then we've got our north-south running orogenic gold deposits. And we have both styles of mineralization on the project. Our main resource is in that orogenic gold um, style of mineralization, but we all ha also have a small VMS style. So when we're talking about orogenic gold, that's just, you know, free gold by itself, not a lot of other minerals. VMS is your um, volcanogenic massive sulfides you've got high grade gold associated with your base metals and silver when we're looking at those types of deposits so again we've got both styles which is exciting there's lots more room for exploration to continue to add those but when you're talking about sweden and in particular this area of sweden you know mining and forestry number one jurisdictions sweden is the number one metals producer in europe we've got phenomenal infrastructure right through the asset to the project you stay at a hotel in your 15 minutes right to the heart of the deposit You've got green energy. It's all hydroelectric and wind energy in the area. Lock, looking for places for that power to go. High blockchain locked in a one and a half cent a kilowatt hour price. So you got some of the cheapest power in the world that you can have access to from an industrial standpoint. I mean, it's got everything going where you have paved. You've got a rail right through the project that goes to the smelter on the eastern side of the land. It's a belt that is very much known for mining. Lundin has had mines in this area, but it's, some people refer to it as the Belieden Belt, which is a major you know, gold and base metals company. Again, it's an area that's known for mining. They're looking for new jobs. They're looking for more mining projects, and we've got a great project to bring along the way on that front. We've got low corporate tax rates. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but it's one of the top jurisdictions, if not the best in the world for mining. As far as the big picture, our goal, you know, here is, is, you know, obviously we're working on certain things, but we have a plan and there's a plan in place that, you know, one to one and a half years with 30,000 meter program. And we're going to dramatically be increasing our, you know, two and a half million ounce resource that we have on the project right now. You can see in the picture there, that's taken from the central part of the project, um, Agnick Eagle scraped away the glacial till there you're right into mineralization right at surface once you're through that kind of two to ten meters depending where you are on the project of glacial till and and again that'll be part of an open pit to start with on the project when this becomes a mine but you're looking at three different styles of mineralization or of mining um open pit select underground and bulk tonnage underground as far as the resource and the way it sits right now again you're right close to the town close to workforce you've got water in the area everything you're looking for there's major power line corridors going through the project um, but we have a plan in place we plan to dramatically increase that resource um, and the project manager has identified through 30,000 meters how you would do that near-term plans again again we continue to do um, and agnico's team continues to do what they're what they're good at they've got great relationships in the communities and with the sami people you know, continuing to do all those high level things, environmental, and they're planning for the drill program, which should be starting here in the next couple months. Continuing on what I just said there again, they've identified a lot of new tar targets regionally around the project that we'd be looking to make new discoveries on or advance on that Basti Trask area has been an area that's highly interesting, but they, uh, they do a, uh, something called MAFA bot drilling to test and identify where additional targets are and that's been an ongoing constant program and it just keeps showing you know on this massive land package all the potential for additional discoveries but we always kind of say we want agnico to come back in and focus in on the gold zone because that's where we've already got our two and a half million ounces and we know we can expand that greatly with additional drilling so it's it's a combination of you know how much drilling is done on these regional targets versus continuing to expand that already known gold zone 
again, similar. I mean, our, our model, if, if it's not Agnico Eagle that ends up turning into this a mine, we're looking at one of the other major mining companies. This jurisdiction is definitely on the radar of a lot of the other big significant mining companies. Um, our group's model is to advance a project to a point where one of the major mining companies comes in and buys us. And that's the big you know, premium that our investors are looking for. That's their exit out of a company that isn't as liquid as you know the big major mining companies. So our large investors invest in us because they know that we stick to our plan and our model. And, and the big win for everyone is when we sell the company to one of the big mining companies. Here you can see a summary of the drilling that Agnew has done. We've been free carry and haven't had to spend a penny on the project um, since we did our joint venture in 2015 with Agnico Eagle. So all of that 162,000 meters of drilling, we have, again, we haven't spent anything. That's all been done by Agnico Eagle. You can see here, you know, the golds are the yellow goldish color lines. That's the kind of the deposit as we see it. These are vertical panels. They come together and some areas, you know, you'll get, 15 plus of these in parallel and get you know 100 meters plus wide of mineralization or more it's a very these are vertical so you one drill like i said one drill can go through 12 15 of these things um you can see the small vms resources up in this nora area that's that little rectangular box there but our main gold zone here in the three kilometer long zone that's expanded um especially northwest of avan and then we've got risk for get down here, which is kind of the end of the eight kilometer trend as Agnico defines it. And that is outside of the resource and already has, you know, would have a bunch of additional ounces added to it from that. So again, you can see drilling kind of slowed down as Agnico publicly stated, you know, they were focused on Canada and, and they cut their exploration budgets, you know, around the whole company. Um, and so we were subject to that. They've continued to drill, but like I say, we're working on, changing how that's going to be and who's going to be the operator and you know hypothetically we're going to be coming in here and and taking over the project and bringing you know it back into prominence which is why it's really exciting time for people to be looking at investing in it one of the big things that agnico got recently was well i guess it's not recently anymore but during covid was um this national economic interest designation and you can see here it covers all of nor it covers our entire gold zone and a big part of that lake. And essentially that was a multi-year process um, going through, you know, community studies and dealing with the government. And, and they basically have said there's, you know, there's enough mineralization here that this is now of national economic interest to the country. Nothing should stand in the way of mining. It's a very important designation to get on your project and not easy to get. But again, it's a, uh, when you're looking at permitting and looking at other things, this is a very helpful thing to have on the project. Again, I was just talking about the eight kilometer long zone, but again, you know, we've got three, over three kilometers of strike to find just in the main zone. We've got risk for get, we've got VMS upside, we've got other targets. We can expand our existing three kilometers at depth. And, and oftentimes, it, you know, it's getting better as we go deeper. Um, we've got the Bonanza veins that are outside of the resource that Agnico discovered when they drilled at a different orientation that will be followed up on and, and we believe there'll be more of those throughout the whole zone. So there's lots and lots of room for us to continue to grow this resource. And in the long run, you know, we fully expect that this is gonna be a five to 10 million ounce plus deposit of uh, gold deposit. So again, I mean, you're looking, you're talking about a tier one asset and a great jurisdiction and something that's gonna be appealing to all of the major mining companies. Again, you can see just some of the, the pit shell and the wireframes here and then you know, looking at what we've got. And again, you can see a lot of colors outside of the white that for, you know, various reasons were left out of the resource. We'll be looking at adjusting that and changing that. A lot of it is just that stuff was isolated and too far spread apart to be included in the resource. Again, with infill drilling, we're going to bring in a lot of those ounces into a resource. We talked briefly about the Bonanza veins. And again, here, you can see those vertical panels I was describing outside of that. You can see where the Bonanza veins were hit and that's all outside of the resource. So again, you've got a 200 by 200 by 700 meter area that was previously untested. They put a few holes into it and hit some, you know, pretty spectacular grades when you're looking at stuff there, like up to 650 grams gold in, in the one sample. So again, I mean, that's all outside of the resource that should help bring up the grade in the Avan area of the project as well. But, but when we're at grade here, we're already, you know, sitting in an area that we believe is economic. So again, it's, um, got everything going for it when you're looking at an asset and these are all things moving forward that are going to upgrade and improve the project.
mentioned risk forget as well. This is at the end of that eight kilometer trend. You can, you can see going right by the, the highway and the rail going right past that part of the project. So again, infrastructure is very good. This is all outside of the resource. And these are agnical slides and projecting on what they see is existing here. So this area, you're not encumbered on an open pit. Um, you're not as close to the lake as you are in the central and Shearson zone. Um, Again, completely out of the resource, definitely ounces that will be added here moving forward into that resource. But again, some pretty, you know, up to 250 grams gold in, the, in a meter sample. So it's got those high grade bonanza veins potential in it as well. Nora, again, this has been, you know, I think Agnico's focused probably too much on the VMS side, but they see what we've already got and they know that VMS is occurring clusters and that there's going to be multiple VMSs around the project. They've definitely, you know, through geophysics and through sampling, identified other potential areas, but they haven't quite vectored in on another VMS. But this particular trend is, you know, in the upper quartile for gold content amongst VMSs in the world. So it is very attractive having access to the silver, copper, lead, zinc on top of high grade gold. You can see, you know, some of the intercepts that we've hit here previously in Nora. Um, so it is, it's very exciting, but when you've already got, you know, almost two and a half million ounces of gold in the gold zone, you know, from our perspective, we'd like to see a little more focus there. More V again, we're talking about VMS targets around the project and, and slowly these will get tested. But again, for us, the main focus should be on that gold zone and Avan central shears and extending over to risk forget. Won't spend too much time on this. Again, we can see our, our highest grade sample that we ever had on the project was 1,165 grams gold. But around that and through, it's very consistent and it's free gold. You know, it's not, it's not, in, it's not bound into the lattice of another, you know, it's, you're going to, your recoveries and we'll get to that slide are going to be very good because this is just disseminated gold and a granite diorite. Um, going to be very easy to recover and at a very high percentage. It's another one of those targets we talked about Bastard Trask. They put a few shallow holes quickly into that and hit a 32 grammar. So, you know, it's again, this is off trend from our main zone, but, you know, another target that we need to learn more about and, and ultimately can add more ounces to the project. Just diving in here, you can see some of those results again of where they were drilling in Bastard Trask and trying to get an idea of orientation of that target. But this was another target that was found through the bot drilling and, you know, which, and when I describe bot drilling, bot drilling is a drill that goes through the, the glacial till and then samples the first meter to two meters into the, the host rock or your granite diorite. And, and these were the results. And then, so that identified it. And then they went and put some shallow diamond drill holes into this area and again hit, you know, nice mm -hmm. mineralization. So that's another area that we, like you said, we need to get a better understanding of, you know, it even hit nickel <laughs> part of that area. So there's all sorts of weird stuff going on in that part of the project and trying to figure out, you know, which way is the gold line going there? Or what is these base metal numbers that are coming in just speaks to the level of mineralization on the project. And that this is definitely like, you know, a lot of different fluids were boiling and creating targets and creating, you know, mineralized bodies all over the project. We talked about the glacial till again, you get an idea here in that central zone, looking at the trench and the structure. And again, you're right into mineralization as soon as you're into that hard bedrock there. It's, uh, you know, they hit some, or when we toured the project last time and going through and they were showing us, you know, where, where we hit 10 grams gold, 20 grams gold in samples. And it was, it's pretty interesting. And you see, you get these fine quartz veinlets going through the project and there's, it's a very complicated, I don't, know, I don't go into it too far, but you get these different mineralizing events. They have the D1, the D2 and the D3 structures and where these come together and it, can create some pretty spectacular grades. Metallurgical testing, again, like I mentioned, you're gonna recover 50 to 60% via gravity circuit. The first pass at metallurgy was 92.6. That number will increase as you get more dialed in and really focus on, on bringing that rate up. I would anticipate you're certainly gonna be over 95% by the time it's done. But again, 50 to 60% just through a gravity circuit and the rest would report to a closed circuit cyanide leach system. Um, very familiar with the other there in the area, there are other projects that have, you know, been permitted for that all over, you know, the area. So again, it's nothing that would shock the system when you hear cyanide, it's very common in the sector and in mining in that particular belt. So again, really good recoveries and a low cost mining method when you can just crush and recover that type of percentage. And then the rest is reporting to that. And it's going to keep your, your, uh, recovery costs very low. 
just here is the, the last resource that was done on the project. And again, the numbers here would have increased from the drilling since this, uh, this mineral resource estimate. But again, you've got some very attractive grades. You can see the sensitivity that we'll hear about our resources based off of what's highlighted in the red print. Um, we're not allowed to summarize in here, but you know, if you start adding up the different categories and the different mining methods, you're sitting at just under two and a half million ounces of gold. You can see the cutoffs that were used. And again, this was done at 1300 gold. So again, gold has also run up significantly higher since this and would also, you know, you could potentially start looking at some of the other sensitivities if you're using higher gold prices and that also brings in a lot more ounces to the project. This kind of, you know, we've, we've seen other companies promote off of their high grade boulders. And again, this is something that was found, you know, fairly recently um, and it was in the 2021 program. And when you're looking at these areas, you have to picture that, you know, the glaciers that were covering this and as they retreated and, you you know, could very limited areas have outcrop. But every so often you'll find these boulders. And in this particular case, this boulder was sampled in around 91 grams of gold in the sampling. And so then you've got to try and imagine and picture where, okay, where did this come from? Where did that glacier, you know, scrape across and move this boulder from? And they don't, in this area, tend to move a lot of areas. So from, you know, when you're looking at it, this, they did say, though, that this didn't come from our main zone. This is sitting southeast of the, the main Advent Central Shearson zone. But this would be another target that we need to, you know, ultimately identify and find where this came from that's producing, you know, in a boulder high grade of gold and isn't from our main zone. So, again, there's something else there that's going to produce big numbers that, are, again, are going to add ultimately when we find it to our resource. And, again, there's plans to start searching on where they think this is most likely to have come from. I won't spend too much time on this slide. This was done by a national bank a, a while ago. And, and basically of their entire coverage universe, they said we were the most, um, this is the, we joke, this is a slide that never came to fruition. As metal prices moved up, our share price hasn't moved up for other reasons, but we should benefit from the, as share prices move up more than any of the other companies that you can see, you know, from their coverage universe. And that's something that, you know, speaks more to the fact that drilling has slowed down. Like I said, that's going to be changing moving forward, but as we bring this to prominence, this should be amplified and we really should recover our share price by a lot. Uh, so again, we're excited for when that's gonna happen, but again, it just speaks to this project and how much we can benefit and should benefit based on our share price to gold prices rising. The other slide, just as you value ounces in the ground and what our market cap or what the value of the project should be around different prices per ounce in the ground. And I would say, you know, if you're looking at Agnico Eagle, they put out public sites before where they advertise that in the past, their average purchase price per ounce is about 120. I remember they said it was like 124 or something along those lines in the ground. And so when you're looking at our company, which with two and a half million ounces, you know, in that range, you're looking at around, you know, 360 million US or 450 million Canadian. And we're sitting here today trading at about a 50 million market cap. So it just gives you more of an idea of the upside and how quickly, just on what we already have, never mind expanding the resource and growing it, that, you know, what investors can look for gains on this company if they're looking to, you know, buy our stock. I mean, again, I, this is kind of the summary slide here, but, you know, for us, our groups had experience in the sector for decades. You know, we've worked all over the world. We've had guys work for the big producing companies. You know, we've got a great geology team. And I take them at, you know, their honesty in our group and what they're saying to us. And, and to them, this is the best project they've ever been involved in in their career. And it checks off. And one of the reasons it just checks off every box you're looking for when you're looking at a project. It's got the asset. It's in a great jurisdiction. It's got, you know, good institutional support by the company. We're free carried by Agnico Eagle. There's lots of blue sky. The metallurgy is great. We're you know, highly leveraged to gold and can benefit from it rising. And, and because of all those other things, we're also a strong takeover candidate. So, I mean, it, to me, it checks off all those boxes. It's just an act of getting the program, growing the, you know, the budget and growing, you know, the targeting of that gold zone of getting the news flow increasing. But it's a company that at half the ounce is half the grade and gold at 1200 was trading at $1.60 a share. So again, We've added a lot to that, and there's no reason that we shouldn't be back trading at those prices and much higher. And so that's you know what's going to be happening, and that's why it's an exciting time for people to be looking at the project and be able to get in at such a low price level on the stock. And that, that's that's the deck. I mean, that summarizes it.
Well, I uh, definitely appreciate these insights. I think this is very entailing. And I want to pass the question off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section below. Consider subscribing because as news, as these catalysts hit the wire, we're going to continue to update you here as well. But on that, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.